All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're at here after the big win for the GNH Yellow Jackets, beating the Seymour Wildcats 20 to seven. It was one of the best games I think you guys have played. That Torrington game was really good, but today uh, was just you know spectacular again. You know, and kudos to the defense, right? Two weeks in a row, you give up 12 points last week and only seven points this week. It's just been an amazing uh, transformation of you guys uh, uh, coming out there. So let's just talk a little bit about, uh, and, and we saw, Hoffman, we want to ask about your sack at the end there. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, uh, I just used what we learned. I just used what we learned, and uh, I jab stepped and it worked. Kid, huh? Yeah. Kid was big. He was a big kid, yeah. you know, but you guys got it. Talk a little bit about, because in the first half, he seemed to have all day out there, and in the second half, you guys came through. Yeah, I just, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to, and then I, I kind of realized that, so I just, I got to improve, you know? All right, all right. Mike? Let's go on. And uh, Owen, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the second half. Two weeks in a row, you shut out the opposition in the second half. What, if anything, did Coach say to you guys at halftime, that may, what adjustments were made? I mean, just even at the beginning of the game, he just wanted us to be like the hum, hardest hitting team, I guess. And I mean, we mainly focused this week about getting off the field on third and fourth down, which was a big thing, which we haven't done in the past like five or six weeks. Keep talking to me. And yeah, we did. We did it today and worked out pretty well. Yeah. So, because. As a coach, what I gave him the halftime speech was at some point in this in this half, we're going to be backed up fourth and ten, and we're going to need to punt the ball 80 yards, <laughs> and for, to seal off the win. And I, you know, you talk about great plays. Yeah. All right, the fact that he had to jump up and catch that ball, yep. all right, and that snap that's probably saved a touchdown. The punts that flipped the field, all right, the knockdown pass in the middle, Reaver. all right. Reamer came to play today, all right. And he's finally it's there, and it showed. All right, defense stepped up great. Special teams stepped up great. Punt return for a touchdown. Some awesome punts. All right, and that's when it came to play on third and fourth down. Reamer, yeah, give us a little bit about that, because that's exactly why you're you're up here today. Because we saw, you know, that punt was unbelievable. And I said before, when you stopped that one, because you saved a, giving up a touchdown, right? I so mean, it's, a little bit about it's pretty much a playoff game. You know, you got to do everything, yeah. the best you can do, and it's just like, I guess that was it. You know, like. Had to be clutch, I guess. How about the reverse play then, too? Oh, yeah, I kind of expected that to be wide open because those are always open. And we had Nolan at tailback, and, you know, they were definitely looking at him rather than a yeah. sophomore who's never played varsity. So, yeah. Right. And, Owen, one more thing I want you to comment on. You made a – you laid out to knock down a pass over here at this sideline. It was a big, big play. Uh -huh. Just take us through that a little bit, will you? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of just you know I had to go 100% for that ball. It was just super far away, I mean, so they, I just... They had two receivers in the area. Either one of them could have caught the ball, and if you didn't make that play, one of them would have, and it probably would have been a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So you made two touchdown-saving plays huge. today. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, talk a little bit about the D-line, because we saw, especially in, this, in the second half, uh, those guys just really started putting pressure on them. Right. You know? Well, the first I mean, they run, they run very tight splits, and so our D, you know, first half, and they were on seven-man protections. So they were keeping their tight end in the block or keeping one of their backs in the block or their wing back in the block. So really, at some points, it was seven on three for the rush. So we weren't really getting in there. And, that, you know, they you know, kind of back leaked out of the backfield, caught that one touchdown on there. But once we got them to a spot where they had to throw, all right, now you can't have a seven-man protection. Now you got to widen your splits out in the second half. And that's where we were able to take advantage of the quickness. Again, these are big, strong offensive linemen for them. They're weight room hounds. All right, but our quickness, clearly... I beat him. Once we can tee off, and you know, that was the one thing I kept saying to these guys, all right, you know it's a passing situation, pin your ears back and go. Or get outside. At the end, tell them widen out, get up there, get that pass rush in. And, they, you know, like, they have a sophomore quarterback who's just learning this stuff, all right, and he gets a little flustered, some bad balls come out of it. But that was key. I mean, the first half, a little bit different, tight splits. They're still thinking they're running the ball. Second half, passing situation. All right, they did an awesome, probably one of our be best pass defense games in a while. Normally, we kind of let everything up on a pass, but this is a good one. 
and, and, and Hoffman, I, I thought he did a nice job uh, coming up there. And as he said before, with that jab step and, and getting in there and, and doing that thing. So, you know, overall, and that's why we guys, that's why we have you guys here because the defense really, you know, shined today and last week too, right? 12 yeah. points last week, seven points this week. You know, it's a, you know, it's a great job by the GNH defense. And that's what, uh, you know, that's, that's where, and it puts us now, puts you guys right in a good position, right? You're probably back in the playoff hunt right, right now. Yeah. So uh, thanks, guys, uh, for being here. And we look forward to seeing your uh, uh, day next week at 2 o'clock. So we'll be back ready for that. So thank you, guys. You. And we'll see you thanks, out in the field next thank week. You. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, guys. All right, Go Coach. Have fun celebrating with your teammates. Thank you. All right, thank Coach. You. Thanks, man. All right, where do our other guys go? We're going to bring in a couple of got our a senior seniors. spotlight players here. Spotlight. All right. So, hey, 2 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So get right in between us two. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Max, for coming with us. Brett, thanks for joining us. So uh, now we're going to uh, have our senior spotlight where we interview a couple of the seniors each day. Today we have number six, uh, Brett McGuire, and number 66, Mac Lin Max Linoff. And just talk a little bit about this game today. We just had the defense on, and they played a, uh, you know, a, trem a tremendous game today. And the offense also you know, started really working hard. The line, I thought, did an excellent job uh, today. And uh, you guys got some big plays. I mean, it all goes with practice up here. Our practice this week was probably the best we've ever had, and it just showed on the game field. Yeah, I mean, it was a good game on defense. We had multiple goal line stops. Uh, we haven't really stopped teams in third and long, fourth and long this year, so it was nice to stop them and get off the field. Absolutely, and uh, you guys, uh, really, I thought it was your best overall performance from both the offense, defense, and special teams of the whole season. So uh, kudos to you guys, and you know, the, one of the reasons that we have you guys on is we like to spotlight the seniors in the program, whether you've been with the program for four years or just one year, you know, we want to hear a little bit more about what you guys do off the field, so we'll start with that. Billy's got a series of questions here for you. Yeah. First of all, we, we just want to ask Max, you know, what made you finally decide to, to come out for the football team this year? Well, I've always wanted to play in my life, but I, I just couldn't find the motivation. And I, This year I was talking to the seniors last year and they were telling me to play. So this year I was like, you know what, I'm just going to play and play with my heart out. It, you know, it, it, it's what we hear every year, you know, and, uh, um, you know, people that come in and, and only come and play for one year are just amazed by what happens. But people who stay here for a long time, as you have, Brett, you know, and talk a little bit about your whole career and wh what you think about the GNH football team. Uh, freshman year, we had COVID, so we didn't, we didn't even get to get equipment. And then sophomore year, made playoffs, lost in the first round. Last year made playoffs again, lost in the second round, and then this year hoping to make playoffs again. So Yeah, and uh, today's victory kind of put you guys back and at least on a little bit of a track to get maybe back into the Class SS playoffs, and uh, that'll be a great thing if you guys can get on a little bit of a roll here. But uh, one of the things we like to ask all the seniors is a little bit about what you like to do off the field. So we'll start with a really a kind of an easy softball type of question. Who's your favorite uh, college or professional football team? We'll start with you, Brett. Uh, professional football team, I like the New York Giants. Yeah, go big We blue. like that. Professional, I love my Pittsburgh Steelers. Even though their offense is not good this year, but their defense is carrying. That's all I can say. All right, all right. keep the mic. You know. So, and then how about what's your uh, favorite pizza place and what's your favorite pizza topping? Ooh, favorite pizza place. Yeah, I'll have to go with ABC down here in Winstead. I, I just love going to it and probably pepperoni for my slice. Uh, yeah, probably ABC and Winston or Kent, but favorite's got to be bacon. bacon. Bacon? Ah, we like that. We like your answers, guys. How about what's your favorite junk food? Uh, All right, we'll start with you, Brett. Favorite junk food? Oh, I like Skittles. Skittles, Skittles before the yeah, game. Yeah, Halloween, yeah. I just love a good Hershey bar. Hershey bar, yeah, that's nice. All right, how about this one? How about any uh, parents or siblings that are athletes also? Well, my dad used to play high school football oh, back wow. in the day. Okay. All right. How about you, Brett? Uh, no, I think my dad played baseball, but that's about it. Baseball? Okay. All right, now here's the funny one. So what is your pet peeve? Like, what bugs you the most? We'll start with you, Brett, and then you can pass the mic. 
Um, probably people like who are annoying, annoying people who don't stop talking. Yeah. I can't stand people who chew with their mouths open. I can't stand that. Yeah, way to go, Max. All right, if you uh, your favorite vacation spot. It's anywhere with a nice beach. Just I love I love sitting on the beach. Yep. There Probably you felt go. like you were at the beach today. It was so warm out yeah. there. I like uh, I like going to Maine in the winter for a week and going snowmobiling every year. So that's fun. Wow, where do you go in Maine? Uh, Rangeley. Rangeley. Oh, I was just up there for the first yeah. time it's last right winter. It's beautiful there. Yep. It's nice. Beautiful there. Right, and now, the, only, the last question I'm gonna say is, uh, what would people be surprised to know about you? Same thing. We'll start with you, Brett, and pass it over to Max. Like for me, is uh, I I love reading. I love, I read books all the time. What were they surprised to know about you? Oh, I eat a lot. I don't eat look like lot? it, but you I do. eat a lot. Ah, that's a good one, Brett. I'll go with the opposite, bro. I don't eat that much, and I still, I don't know. <laughs> I I try to lose the weight. It's going, though. It's going for me. All right, cool. All right, well, thank you guys for uh, being our senior spotlight today. We appreciate it. Yeah, go celebrate, and uh, we'll see you next week for senior week. All right, so that'll do it. Uh, for us here today, uh, again, another big victory for GNH 20-7 over the Seymour Wildcats, and it was a great game. Yeah, when coming into this game, uh, we knew that they played a pretty good game last week, but they just didn't quite put all the pieces together. And today, really think they did. Offense, defense, and special teams played pretty much complementary yes. type of football, right. and it paid off in a big victory. I think it's their first victory ever over Seymour. First uh, time ever playing first, them. First time ever playing Never them. Never so playing them. I said that. Yeah. Right. So, yep. Uh, 20 yep. to 7 is our final score. I see the scoreboard clock is off now, but once again, a, a big victory for GNH raises their record back to 3 and 4 and puts them on the cusp of the Class Double S playoff race. And they will host Woolcott High up here next Saturday at 2 o'clock for Senior Day. So if you uh, want, come on out and cheer on the guys for Senior Day. And then there's also another home game. Or the, the week after that against Holy Cross. Cross. So three yep. consecutive home games before they finish up the regular season on Thanksgiving Eve against St. Paul of Bristol. But uh, on behalf of our cameraman, Tim Wheeler, and we also want to thank Patsy DeMauro for being up in the booth with us today. My colleague Billy Richmond, I'm Mike Kurtz. We're signing off here from beautiful Van Wy Field. Once again, our final score today, a big GNH victory, 20-7 over the Seymour Wildcats. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.